Hey, welcome back to a little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to have a peek at format. We're not going to go through very much of it because it's quite a beast in itself. Format essentially has um, is it, well, what it's for is for um, formatting strings, but um, it is a very powerful little DSL, a little domain-specific language for formatting strings. And quite frankly, I don't understand a lot of it, so we're going to stick to very simple parts of it. And the first bit is just um, we're going to use it for making strings, we're also using for printing some stuff out um, in cases where like print isn't enough. So the first question to ask is if we look at this, we can see that we wanted it to print out hello, or well, we wanted it to format the string hello, and it's done that, it has returned hello, um, but we've got this nil here, so it's kind of interesting what this is. So if we, once our cursor's in this form down in our mini buffer, we can see that the first argument is a destination. Now what destination is going to take is a stream designator. So it's generally case it's either a stream itself, which we're going to write uh, the result into, or it's going to be some symbol um, that represents a stream. So nil in this case means there's no stream. So we're going to just return um, the formatted uh, result as a string. Simple enough. If we put in T, we're going to effectively write to the standard out. So you can see here that our side effect is to write hello, um, and the result of this expression, the value we got back, is nil. So here we got a string back, here we got nil back. But we, the side effect here was to actually print something out. So that's cool. Um, the other case that you're going to see very often is um, some stream being passed in here, and we're going to look at that more when we get to the print object method because that one's really useful. Uh, for now, okay, I'll, 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 let me do a little diversion. I'm just going to say that t is the same as passing in the stream um, bound to terminal IO, right? So if you're interested in that, you can go look up to see what that is. I'm going to clear this screen and bring back to our first two cases, nil hello and t hello. And we're going to start just Rather than printing things out, we're just going to produce the strings. So let's say we want hello equals and then some number. I've written tilde here, which is, means this is the start of some format directive. Um, these are, we're going to do something funky inside this string. And this is the point where something is going to happen. Um, so let's say um, we're going to do hello equals 10. Cool, that, that's what we expect. And foo equals another one. And now if I try and evaluate this, it's going to complain and say, hey, we haven't got any more arguments. We've only put, you only passed in 10 and we have two format directives. You should have passed in more. And it can say, this one is the problem. That's cool. So let's get rid of that and pass in 20. Great. So now we've done both of those. Um, this, um, there are a lot of format directives, and I simply cannot go through them all in this stream because it would be an hour long. Uh, it is a full language. I'm not kidding. So, but there are some things I end up using all the time. Um, one of the things is we could write these values. Maybe say we want to write this value as binary. So we do tilde b, and this is a format directive to say, hey, write the thing out, but write it as binary. Bang. Cool, that's done. What about this? Let's say this one has to be in hex. Cool. Uh, let's pick a number that's a little more obviously hexy. Nice. Okay. Um, so, what next? Another thing that can happen is that we might have a list of values and we want to put them into um, a string. So, let's say, let's just strip this down a bit. Um, well, we'll do the, the simple case first. Let's just say A and let's give a load of, we're going to have a number, a number, and then some keyword, and then another number, one, two, A, four. And you can see here that the um, A has become the list. But actually, I don't want it to be formatted like this. I want to have each element written with a little comma between it. So let's, let's start this off. We have, uh, for iteration in our uh, format string, we do tilde, tilde curly brace. That's the tilde opening one and the tilde closing one. This is really weird to look at at first. You do get used to it, but it's not pretty. This is one of those ugly parts of the list, but you're also kind of useful. So we evaluate again, and now we can see the result is one, two, A4. 
cool, but I would like a comma and a space between that. Let's just start with this. Let's, uh, actually, let's just do it. A comma and a space. Cool. And now we get it, but we have this comma and a space right at the end as well. Um, and this is so common that we, you would put something in between, but not on the last one, that there's a format directive specifically for avoiding this problem. So we go back to um, our tilde A, and then we put tilde hat, which means do it for all of the things in the list except the last one. Again, we're not trying to, uh, in this stream, I'm not trying to teach you the actual mechanics of format. Frankly, I don't get it either. But um, these are the patterns I use very often. So we've got our little uh, iterated list. Our um, tilde array is also kind of important. So let's have a quick look at that. Um, if I do, let's uh, just clear this for now. Let's leave the last one up. Um, we'll do format nil test equals, and then we'll do a, and we'll do the symbol foo. Actually, let's do the keyword foo. It's probably me clearer if we do that. We'll try uh, the symbol in a minute as well. Um, here we see foo, but if I change this to s, this is using the aesthetic directive and this is the standard directive and they're, they're essentially equivalent to two other functions and I'll show them in a second. When I do s, we get the um, colon here as well. And generally this is, um, this is like, hey, print it in a pretty way, hey, print it in a more kind of like the days way. Um, so, if we do a list of things, actually, let's not do a list, let's do another string. So we say foo, so test equals, and we see we've got the um, escaped double quotes here. But if we change it to aesthetic, we don't have the quotes, and it's kind of like the string's been spliced in. So the difference is that if I can just jump over to the hyperspec, the tilde, oh, not tilde ampersand, where are we? Ooh. Okay, then I will go and find this. It is under, I think, printer operations? Yes, okay, here we go. Um, so tilde A is the equivalent of using the print function. Again, we can look that up, but it's gonna be the same behavior. Um, and the S is gonna be using the print one function. So you can look those up to see what these kind of defined behaviors actually are. Um, but I just remember it as aesthetic and standard. And, you know, I'm generally playing with the stuff in the REPL anyway, so it's kind of like until I get the right one, I just mess around. Um, generally, I'm not I'm not doing much big text processing lists, so I guess I haven't really had to care about this. My main concern when I'm using format is for dumping out um, information for debugging. So we have iteration, we have values, and we have some ways to present those values. And we saw that we have the hat that can be used inside the uh, iteration to say, do this on everything but the last one, do like this, uh, but everything in the last one. Two other things to look at. Um, one is conditionally do something. So maybe I want to say, um, I want to say test equals some value unless the value is nil. And then I just want to write test. So this is a particularly weird one. We do tilde at square bracket, tilde, oops, tilde square bracket. And now when we do this with 10, we got test equals 10 and we do it with nil, we get test. So this part is the conditional part right here. This is not gonna get done unless that value was non-nil. Not as useful as often as the other ones, but occasionally it's exactly what you need. And in that case, it's really handy. Um, what about the other things? Oh yeah, new lines. Let's let's talk about new lines for a second. So I'm gonna go and get this guy. Again, let's uh, clear the screen. Go back up to it. Da -da -da -da. So this is where we're putting commas and spaces between things. Let's say instead we want to have hello and then a colon and then each thing on a, its own new line. So let's go and re remove all this hat business here and we'll run that to see what we get. One, two, A4 again, excellent. The 
format directive for new line is tilde percent. So we do that. Each of those things inside the loop becomes uh, goes on to a new line. Again, new line doesn't have to be used inside an iteration. So we could put one right here, for example. Whoops, let's uh, not change the thing we've already evaluated. We've put the uh, tilde app tilde percent inside uh, the hello, and now we can see that we've split that onto two lines. There's also a variant that you will see used. Instead of percent, you will see ampersand. The ampersand is there. And what that means is make a new line unless you can tell that I'm already at the beginning of a line and then don't do anything. I very rarely use it, but you're going to see it around in various code bases. So it's worth knowing what it is. To be honest, that is 90% of what I do in format. Again, I'm a kind of a very kind of basic user in this stuff. But I think with those few, um, you can make your debug messages a lot nicer. Uh, you'll see the format directive come up in a lot of places. Um, like if you, for example, you use break to kind of put a breakpoint in your code. Um, actually, let me bring up a file we can do this in. Let's make a little function. So defun test. We're going to pass in two values, x and y. Uh, and then I'm going to put break. x equals. There's our format directives that we had before. Oops. x and y. So just like format, we've got a format string. And then we've got some arguments being passed in. And then I'm actually going to do the computation. Compile that. When we run test, we'll see. I'm just going to bring that code back up. Test started running until it hit break. And then, oh, I did it wrong. Whoops. Oh, of course. Sorry. I was expecting it to break and I didn't realize I actually fudged that up. Let's pass in 10 and 20. Okay, let's, let's try that again. This time, test ran. Uh, with our 10 and 20 we passed in and then it hit break and it printed out x equals 10 x equals 20 I should really should put y equals 20 shouldn't I so make sure you write things correctly um, but other than that you can see we can use the formatting the skills we picked up from format apply in other places they also apply in assert they apply in errors in, in a bunch of cases we can get to that in other streams but this stuff is useful so it's really worth taking the time even though it's ugly to get it into your head because it really will help you. Cool. Well, I've rambled on for long enough. Let's stop this one and I'll see you another time. Bye.